On this hunt, I'm returning to the family farm of my buddy Doug Dern, who's offered up his land and his time to help initiate two of my friends into the hunting lifestyle. There's Joe Rogan. I don't mind being the guy who wears a sombrero. I think sombreros are kind of cool. And Brian Callen. They look the same as I did last year. Isn't that crazy? And it's not, I don't know oils or anything. I just, I just live my life. In my ongoing quest to make hunters out of these two professional comedians, I'm going to stick them in a blind in the freezing cold to hunt deer on a Midwestern opening day. Oh my God, it's right open. Look at that. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. The last time I brought my friends Joe Rogan and Brian Callen hunting, I took them on a rugged backcountry adventure in Montana that most hunters only dream of doing. This time, I'm taking the opposite approach. We're going mainstream by hunting Midwestern farm country whitetails from ground blinds. And this is the perfect place for it. The family farm of my friend Doug Dern, a professional land manager from the famed Driftless area of Southwest Wisconsin. The Duran family farm is full of deer, and Doug successfully manages the land in the interest of both profit and sound ecology. Right now, that plan involves reducing the deer herd with an eye toward the regeneration of native oaks, the seedlings of which whitetails love to hammer. Doug encourages his buddies to shoot does and leave young bucks unscathed. If you do shoot an immature buck, Farm tradition mandates you don Doug's prize sombrero, a hat with a long story that basically amounts to this. Be more careful next time. If you repeatedly break his rules, you will not be invited back. I'm not gonna shoot a small buck because I know that you frown on that. And you make people who shoot small bucks, you're supposed to wear the sombrero and all that. But if we're out here and here's a buck, and, and Rogan wants to shoot a buck, what are you gonna, I mean, are you gonna be mad? Well, they're guests, it's the first time. You know, if you're a guest and you've, we, we'll give you an exemption. We've done that with, with many people. We just say, you know, go ahead and do it. And it's not like, I mean, the worst thing that's going to happen to you is you got to wear the damn hat. Yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah. Like, you're actively looking to get dough, drop dough numbers. Very much so. We're trying to regenerate red and white oak. But well, the deer just hammer the oak. But they just love them, yeah. So you're going, like, one thing you'd like to do is get some does out of here. I'd take as many as eight or ten does out of here. Is that right? There's a balance in there, and it's a whole ecosystem that we're trying to balance, and we've committed real heavily to this program, and a part of it is simply to reduce the number of deer, or at least discourage them from being in here. Yeah, yeah. So it's a weird balance, because of course we want to have deer and have good hunting and all that, but at the same time, I like, I, I don't want to see a lot of deer, I want to see fewer, bigger, and you know, nice age classes of deer. It's two days before the season starts, and the forecast is showing some pretty frigid temperatures are on the way. Doug and I are scouting locations to make sure everything's in order before the guys arrive. We're facing pretty much straight north right now. Mm -hmm. The wind is going to be coming this way. Um, so I question how good of a spot this will be because of how exposed it is. I like the more visibility you got in the other spot. I like the other spot, too. Yeah. But these are just I'll nice. tell you what, though, you up there by yourself, you'd like that spot. Like oh, I'm, spot. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'd be nice to be up there. Of course, we want to make sure that the deer actually show up. And that means using every tool we have available. Doug produces one of the finest deer lures in his own bladder. It's called Buckman Juice. I, I can't explain it. It just, it just works. It's just, and if something works, I stick with it. Listen, I've seen the photographic evidence many times. Deer smelling Buckman Juice, buck smelling Buckman Juice, doe smelling Buckman Juice, yeah. buck taking nap on Buckman Juice. Occasional <laughs> rabbit. Sometimes there's a raccoon. There might be a grinner goes by once in a while. You gonna freshen her up? If you'd like to do the honors. I get shy bladder if people watch. You, you, all right, well, you lay it down there. Uh-oh. Should have had some more coffee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my mother is so proud of me. You want to bottle some of this? You don't mind if I get a little on so, my boots, do you? <laughs> Can I just set my blind here, Doug? This would be a good spot. All right. 
And that's how you do it. I know, that's a hundred, there's probably a hundred bucks worth right now staying in the inside of your tidy whities <laughs> are the main purpose of this trip, but I also want to share with these guys some things that will be completely new to them. Besides, there's no real guarantee that we'll actually be getting any venison. A sure way to jinx a hunt is to get cocky and overconfident. And instead of thinking that we're just gonna have deer meat coming out of our ears once we start hunting and we're gonna be eating all kinds of great venison meals every night, I'm gonna plan for failure on deer hunting. And I'm gonna set some beaver traps in here and hopefully have a big beaver roast. I'm seeing lots of fresh beaver sign, a fresh feed pile of willow, cut corn from a nearby field, a fresh slide, and an active den built into the riverbank. These traps I'm setting are called body grippers and they pack a wallop. To guide the beavers into the traps, I plant sticks into the mud in order to force them where I want them to go. When I was a kid, all I did was trap. All my friends this time of year, you know, they'd be like hunting ducks, hunting deer, and I'd be out running trap line. And I feel like a, like a hunting education should include a little bit about like this kind of stuff, you know? A lot of guys don't know about this, but just kind of like how to come in and read sign and find animals, setting traps. I got my shortcomings as a hunter, but I'll tell you one thing, man, I can read sign, and that comes from the time I spent trapping. I think we're set for success. I'll come back to check the traps in a day or two, but first I want to secure another favorite wild game dish of mine. Tomorrow, it's going to be an early morning. It's 5 a.m., and Doug and I are getting tonight's dinner. Here they come. <laughs> Take it. This is one of my absolute favorite pieces of game meat. Love these things. This is like the dock, man. These guys are beautiful too. They got their winter colors. Look at that. Man, these are beautiful birds. Nice, man. Look at that. We did pretty good for a guy who just pulled into town and says, let's go duck hunting over here. No, this is a good morning hunt, man. The way I see it, no Midwestern experience would be complete without a meal of wild duck cooked rare. For cooking this mallard, I want to make a sauce out of stout beer and maple syrup. And then I'm just going to sear the duck and kind of barely cook it. I'm going to sear it in a pan, just whack, whack in a pan, and then put it in a really hot oven for not many minutes. And then in the end, I'm going to slice it really thin and drizzle this sauce over it. After adding brown sugar, cloves, cinnamon, and nutmeg, I'm gonna let it simmer. Later, I'll add some stock and reduce it until the sauce thickens. In the end, you want the sauce to be where it would coat the back of a spoon. So you dip a spoon in like so and lift it away and you should see a coating of that stuff on there. So while this does this, I'm gonna sear these ducks. And what I wanna do is get two pans super hot and I'll do two halves per pan. That. You see how they just, they like, as soon as you put them in there, they just suck right up. The reason I'm doing the skin down right now is I want to brown that skin and crisp it, because then I'm going to flip it back, and when I go in the oven, it's going to go skin up in the oven. It's 400 degrees, and it's going to be less than 10 minutes. What's happening? How are you, buddy? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. What's going on? Mr. Cal, you, what's going on? Bring it in, bring it in. You guys ready for the? Yeah, we're ready. Born ready. For the chill? Yeah. Is it going to be cold? 
Doug Duran. This is Doug's family's right, place. Hey, Joe, nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of testosterone. It's a big hand. It's yeah, yeah. a big man. Yeah, I'm, big I'm, pro boots, I'm producing. Gloves. I'm producing estrogen right now, just shaking his hand. That's a big thing. <laughs> Ooh, it's gonna be one of those trips. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is vegan, right? This is vegan, Doug. The brass is very, very, very tender. And the drum, you're going to be picking that thing out of your teeth tomorrow. But right? you might get hungry tomorrow, and you might be glad you found those. That's exactly right. When we hunted last year, we were hunting in an area that, like, a lot of solitude, you know? The Midwest whitetail thing is just not like that. You'll see that Doug has this big map of his place. People have their spots they sit. They're not on top of each other. It's all thought out and planned out. I just want to tell you right now, man, I don't want to wear the sombrero because I don't want to shoot a little buck, but I'll wear a sombrero even if I shoot a big buck if you want me to. I don't mind being the guy who wears a sombrero. I think sombreros are kind of cool. Dinner finished, Doug presents his guests with their souvenir Duran caps. We get down to business. So let's talk about where everybody's going to hunt tomorrow. Steve and Joe are going to go to this pop-up in the first ravine. So you're like, they don't like to run across open field. I feel very good about that spot. <laughs> and then myself and the kid. The kid, you see? You know how good that makes me feel? And you guys know what my real nickname is? I don't really like that spot. Well, you know what? You don't I understand feel like hunting. You're too bushy. No, I zigzag through that. What I'm going to do here. You're all clumped up. No, in he's going to cover me, and I'm going to zigzag listen, through listen, here. Bro. But I appreciate that you call me the kid. I don't age. For where are the cameras? No, I look the same. I look the same as I did last year. Isn't that crazy? And it's not. I don't know oils or anything. I just, I just live my life close to the edge. You Doug was thinking out loud earlier about how he would go about politely asking you to stop talking. <laughs> right. But you know, but I'm, but I'm so entertaining. You're, Listen, you're I'm so entertaining. Before dawn, we're in our blinds. It's hovering around zero. We're just gonna hold tight and freeze our asses while we wait for the mayhem of opening day to break loose. That might be Brian Callen. <laughs> the more that you hear, the better. It's just more likely that more deer are gonna get pushed. You know, they might come over in this direction. Like, the worst thing you can hear on a day like today is just total silence. <laughs> that just kind of means that nothing's moving. With this kind of weather, I can totally see the temptation to shoot the first thing you say. Yeah. Eventually, we start seeing some does and fawns popping up around us. But nothing too exciting comes within range. They might just settle in down here because they're out of the wind. But I think we should wait. Meanwhile, Doug and Brian have set up shop about a half mile away. I understand hunting because you're always looking. And you never know when the deer's going to show up. So the, the active process of looking keeps you very engaged for a long time. You're looking in a different way than you normally do when you're in the city, for example. I would also argue that waiting and looking for the deer is as much a part of hunting, or more, more a part of hunting, than is actually killing the animal. That's a deep thing to say. How long do you reckon we'll stay out here usually? All day. Until we find a deer. Or the deer find us. Or we get to a point we can't stand it. I mean, I'm not going to kid you. This is as cold as it has been in a long time. Hopefully it was 40 degrees last year. Oh, big day. Wow. I'm, I'm here. I'll stick it out. 
Brian, grab your gun. Get your gun. See her? Right on the side hill over there. Oh, there she is. Right where we figured they'd be. Wow, that's a good eye. Look at her. She is bark brown, ain't she? Yeah. Oh, oh, there's another one. There's another one. There, there's another one. See, this is how you develop an addiction for hunting. You got her, Brian? Yeah. That's a nice broadside shot. Yeah, I can see her. She go down? Well, I hit her. She's dead. Would you just let her, let her lay? She's done? Yep. Later in the morning, Joe and I are still waiting patiently for a good deer. Despite his free little buck pass as a first time guest, Joe still wants to at least try to adhere to Doug's guidelines. So when a young buck crosses our path, we decide to let it slip. That's a year and a half old. You can't shoot that buck. No. That's a four corn block. Oh, that was a dead deer. Yeah. I had that deer as clear as you can get it. I know it's funny that the one that really gives you a shot is the one he can't shoot. The problem is, this buck doesn't want to leave. He practically taunts us by milling around in plain sight. And the temptation to cash in on his exemption eats away at Joe. Dude, it's right there. Oh my god, it's right open. Look at that. So when a second small buck enters the mix, it's just too much for Joe to resist. I will wear a sombrero. <laughs> if you're excited, I mean, if you're like excited about shooting it, go ahead and shoot that buck. Okay. Just take your time. See what happened. Did you? I don't know. Yep, it's down. Oh, it's down. It just dropped. Yeah. Yeah. So both Brian and Joe had success early in the day. Brian got a nice doe, and Joe a small buck. It's strange thing looking for a deer that you shot. There's this intimacy to it. I just want to see her. She's mine. Interesting feeling. There she is. That's incredible. I mean, I hit her right where I was aiming. Yep, you did. You hit her good, man. You shot exactly where I told you to, exactly where you should. It was a good ethical shot. You were 85, 90 yards away. You did everything right. You did a really nice job. Thanks, buddy. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's kind of a weird way to shake hands. You know, I spend my time in cities, and you don't know where your food comes from. and to have gone out here and shot my own deer. It's just a, it's an amazing thing, you know? Man, nice shot, man. Look at that. What's it, you hit him right where you want him, deer. Oh, kind of, yeah, you got a good hit. Congratulations, man. First white-tailed deer. Looks like I'm wearing some brown. <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting how much easier it is the second time. To shoot? Yeah, the whole thing. Being the calm thing 
You calm yourself down, the shot itself. A younger deer tastier? They're more tender. More, more tender? They're tastier, yeah. Like milder, more tender. You know, he, I mean, these will be good. These are good deer. A lot of people that a lot of people like whitetail, and then they'll taste mule deer and think mule deer tastes pretty gamey. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then there's a huge difference in age. You know, younger is better. You know. If the trip were ending here, I'd be perfectly satisfied. It's been a great success. Now both Brian and Joe have gotten mule deer and whitetails in their short hunting career. I have a goal this year, man. By the end of the year, I want to be living off game meat. It's a very achievable goal. I'll help you achieve that goal. <laughs> but we've got more tags that are itching to be filled. So we drag Joe's buck down to a trail before heading back to the freezing cold blind. This trip ain't over, not by a long shot.